Hi, I'm Rocky Jacobson, owner of Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls and Supplies, also the home of the Bugling Bull Elk Call Series. I'm also the inventor and the designer of the raised angle pallet plate type diaphragms. In 1992, I invented this call and later on I sold the rights to Will Primos of Primos Game Call Company. My company, Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls and Primos Game Calls are the only two companies that can legally manufacture these calls. We are very appreciative of all the support you've shown us throughout the years and hope you will continue to buy our great hunting calls. We're going to run you through all the different products that we manufacture, show you how they work, show you what we have. But first of all, I'm going to run you through how to use a mouth call diaphragm. The first thing I'd like people to understand is that everybody's roof of their mouth are shaped different. Some are high pitched round domes, some of them are flat, some of them are narrow, some of them medium sized, some of them wide. And if you don't have a diaphragm that fits in the roof of your mouth properly so it seals the air off, so the air isn't escaping around the outside edges or over the top. You've got to have a diaphragm that's going to fit in the roof of your mouth properly so it doesn't rock side to side and you get a good comfortable fit. So we have designed three different styles of diaphragms. And the first one I'm going to show you is what we call a, a narrow frame diaphragm. It has a narrower frame, smaller tape. So people that have narrow roof mouth areas, that's between the upper teeth between the teeth and the inside of your mouth towards the roof of your mouth. This call needs to go up in there without sitting sideways. It needs to sit perfectly flush up against the roof of your mouth and in between your teeth. You want that tape to be sealed off so the air can't escape around the outside edges and over the top. We also make a medium sized frame. It's a little wider and this will fit up in there to where it's more comfortable. It won't let the air seep around also. Most men and even women will have a medium sized roof mouth area. We also make a larger frame one, a larger wider frame so the people that have wider roof mouths and larger tongues can get on this latex a lot easier and it will seal off in the roof of your mouth a lot better. Now I want to show you the proper use of a mouth call diaphragm. and I'm going to start off with the medium sized diaphragms since my mouth is pretty much medium size. I'm a lucky one where I can use a narrow, medium, or large, but I like to use a medium primarily. The call has to go in the roof of your mouth with the plate towards the top, the latex front out towards the mouth opening. You take and put that diaphragm in the roof of your mouth. Kind of pretend like you're taking bubble gum and you're flattening it out and getting it ready to blow a bubble. This is what you're going to do with the diaphragm. Push it up there, to, up in the roof of your mouth. Now you want this call to be further forward in your mouth. You want it almost touching the back part of your upper teeth. Get it sealed <laughs> off so no air is going around the outside edges. You want the call to stand up at more of an angle. You don't want it to lay flat like that. If it lays flat, you have to use the back of your tongue to seal the air off so it won't go over the top. So get it standing up a little bit at that angle, and that way it seals it off so the air has to go between your tongue and the latex. Once you get it up in there, then you got to realize that the air has to flow between your tongue and that latex. And the very first thing I like to show people is how to make a low note. The low note is probably the hardest thing to accomplish because everybody has a tendency to want to push hard and blow hard. Remember that these are a musical instrument and you have to learn to play them. To get a low note, you put, on, put low pressure against it with your tongue. You just barely want your tongue to touch that latex. Now to get a low note, you've got to learn to kind of hum or growl with your voice and blow air at the same time. And direct that air in a straight line between your tongue and that latex. Just don't blow it out everywhere around the outside edges. Make that air go in an even flow right straight down the center of the roof of your mouth. What I like to tell people to do is to start off with a low note is use the word his, 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 and you'll get that vibration sound at the end of his, and that's the low note that you'll accomplish. So let's put the call in the mouth and say the letter his, 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 
you'll feel that vibration at the end of the letter or the word his and that's how you accomplish that low note so learn to do that learn to play it and learn to do it slow and feel that positioning first before you go to the next notes so play this over and over until you get that feeling of the word his to get that low note his As soon as you feel that his sound coming and that vibration, you quit saying his. You just keep that vibration going and keep the air blowing between your tongue and that latex. Again, his. His. There's your low note. Now to get to your next note, you want to start off one octave at a time and then learn the different positions of your tongue so you can feel where that tongue belongs and the pressure you use. Remember to take a deep breath of air, hold it and your diaphragm muscle right here will dam it off so the air can't escape. Hold it and when you let the air out, you let it seep out slowly. Don't just go because you run out of air too quickly and you can't finish the whole sequence of an elk sound. So dam your air up, take a deep breath in, hold it, learn to let it seep out slowly so you got lots of air to work with. Okay, now after the low note, you want to go into a high note. Now I like to take the tip of my tongue and put the tip behind my lower teeth and then roll the round part of my tongue up to the latex. Low pressure for low note, and then learn to flex that muscle in the center of your tongue into the latex. And what I like to do is flex it one stage at a time. I tighten up, flex, tighten up, flex, tighten up, flex, and go up the staircase. But first of all, we're going to do the second note. So I'm going to quit growling, and I'm going to go into the first note. <laughs> Learn to hit that note, hold it a long time, and then kind of release and add your voice back into his to come back down to low note. Repeat that a few times to get the feel of the low note into the first note. His. Okay, now the next note is just a little tighter flex of muscle in upwards towards the tongue, or the tongue upwards into the latex. Now when you come back down, <clears throat> you just let off real slowly with your tongue pressure and then start growling into that his for the lowest note. Now we're going to go into the three, the fourth stage, low note, second note, third note, fourth note. His. Start growling when you come back down off the high note. <clears throat> it's not real hard to do, but just learn to control that tongue muscle so you got positioning power in the center of the roof of your mouth. Your edge of the latex should fit right where the crown of your tongue rolls over. Don't use the tip of your tongue, you'll get a tickling sensation, and then your tongue sits there and vibrates and wavers like that, and you can't get good control. You want to use the breakover, the round part of your tongue up into the latex and learn to flex it at stages so you can get those different muscle controls and different note changes, octaves, to get the high note. Now the key thing is to be able to put this call in your mouth and use it with a grunt tube. The grunt tubes are very important to use because they give you better quality sound, more realistic sounds than if you just use it outside your mouth. In a pinch a guy could use it outside your, the tube without a tube if you had to, but the tubes are going to give you a lot more quality sounds, acoustic changes, quality sounds that a bull does. So take the diaphragm, put it in your mouth, say the letter, the word his, his, that gives you a low note. Then increase your tongue pressure by flexing that muscle to the next note. That gives you the idea of what an elk will sound like using the diaphragm and a grunt tube. 
So I'm going to go through it now and make it sound more realistic by showing you the complete sequence. Again, we'll do it starting with the low note right up to the high note. Come back down, let off your pressure, your tongue, add your voice in there, that, and that gives you the low note stage again. Now the next step I'm going to show you is the chuckling. Right after you do your bugling, from low note to high note, and you come back down into the growl, and then at the end you have to chuckle. And it sounds like this. The chuckling is probably the hardest thing to accomplish. It's not impossible, it just takes a lot more practice. So I'm going to show you how I do it, and you can learn to do it this way. But you've got to remember one thing, that every elk call on the market, to do the chuckling, you have to learn to use your voice along with the notes out of the diaphragm. And the sounds that I make deep down in my chest are the words, uh-huh, uh-huh. I go out with the word letter, uh, or the word, uh, and I suck back in, uh, 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 uh. Kind of reminds you of the monkey sound when you're going, ooh, 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 ooh. But you're actually changing the words to, uh-huh, 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 uh, 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 And you want that sound to come down deep as you can in your chest so it sounds like an elk does with their chest set cavity. <clears throat> so let's try it first. The first time you do it, you want to learn to hit the high note. <coughs> Drop your tongue off that diaphragm and say the word, uh, outward. <coughs> and then suck back in, say the word, <coughs> Learn to do it slow at first so you get the feel of that high note out to the word oh, and the end with oh, 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 oh. Then after you learn that, you can speed up your rhythm a little bit. Don't go fast at first. Take it your time and get the feel for it. <laughs> now you add that into the tube, it gives you more realism and a little easier to blow on too. rhythms that elk do when they're doing their sounds after they come off the bugle. Basically the faster it is the more excited they are. When they're pissed off they'll do a lot harder, deeper sound. <laughs> now the different higher notes that I accomplish is come from pressure. If I want a real high note which sounds like he's more excited and then I taper it off to make it sound like he's getting less excited. I just relieve the pressure of my tongue off the high note and get lower note. <laughs> Sometimes you can add a little air, what we call panting, into that and give it a little more authentic realism effect. So now put it in your roof of your mouth, put your tongue up to it, hit the high note. <laughs> Let off your tongue, pop it away from it, <coughs> get your jaw to drop, and add your voice in there, oh, and then suck back it. <coughs> you control that uh -huh with your diaphragm muscle. <coughs> so you want that sound down deep. Now there's another sound that we make and it's called lip balling. You can add this into your effect with the chuckle and the bugle and all that, but the lip balling comes in the middle of your bugle like after the high note. A bull will do this, especially when he's just playing to the cow. And what we like to do is sputter our lips together the same time that you're blowing on the reed. It's kind of like playing a trumpet. Make the in, inside lips, the middle part of your lip area, do the sputter. 
don't use your whole lips. The looser you get, the lower the note. The tighter you get, the higher the note. Put the diaphragm in your mouth, hit the high note. Learn to sputter at the same time you're blowing the high note. Then you add that sputtering inside the tube along with your high note. Just keep practicing that lip sputtering along with the bugling, the high note, and it'll come to you. Just learn to find which mouthpiece is going to fit you the best as far as size wise. <coughs> keep practicing, and you'll get her. Now, what I want to do is show you the different sounds elk make, all the way from bull sounds to cow sounds to calf sounds. The first sound I'm going to do for you is what we call a location call. This is what elk bulls like to do when they're just talking to each other, trying to figure out where each other's at. And this is a sound that I like to initiate first uh, when I'm looking for an elk for an answer. Like when I'm standing on top of a ridge bugling into a canyon. It's a non-aggressive type sound. and They should answer you right back without scaring them out of the country. It's a sound you can get away with pretty much any time. But I like to initiate it first, see what the bull does. And then if he comes back screaming with a high-pitched scream, I'm going to scream right back at him. The best rule of thumb what to do to an elk is whatever sound he is doing, try to mimic that sound. That is probably the easiest thing to remember. Mimic the sounds that they're doing. Stay at their level. You're going to have a better chance calling that bull in using that type of strategy. You can also do that location call like I did with a two-note change or even a three-note. And I accomplish those different notes by starting off with my tongue pressure just a little bit into the reed and then a little tighter and a little tighter. If you just want to do a two note, just push up for a little harder so you got room left to go to the highest note. So you can start off with a note just below the highest note. <coughs> when I come back off the high note, I just release my tongue pressure just slowly and keep blowing so I get those octave changes when I come down. Don't need to add your voice in at the beginning or at the end for a location call. The next sound I'm going to do for you is what we call a display call. The display call is normally done by bulls that want to show off to the cows so the cows will accept them as a herd bull or two bulls are going to display to get each other to show each other who's the toughest. In a display call you're going to have to learn to do a little lip balling inside that. I showed you before how to do the lip balls. So you just do your bugling. You start off growling, go up to your high note, into a lip ball, growl, and into a chuckle. Again, we'll do the display call, growl, up to a high note, into a lip ball, into a growl, into a chuckle. This is what we call a display call. The next sound I'm going to show you on a bull sound is what we call a challenge call. The challenge call is done with a really a high note. It's screamy, it's kind of airy sound. And when it drops off, it drops off into a growl and into a series of fast chuckling, like this. <laughs> This is telling me that that bull is pretty pissed off and he wants to come run you out of the country. This is when I get ready because I know that bull will probably come and he'll come all the way as long as he doesn't see you or wind you. But you'll hit the high note first and just put a lot of tongue pressure up to it. Blow air and when you come off the high note just kind of release and growl and then go into a series of fast chuckles. <coughs> Now let's do some cow sounds. And when it comes to cow sounds, there's a lot of different sounds they make, but they have their basic cow mew, and it sounds like this.
basically I'm just putting my tongue up against the reed to hit the high note and I let off real slowly and make it vibrate into yeah make it slowly come down into a low vibration get that little cat meow sound Nyah. that's your basic cow sound now your basic calf sound is just a little softer a little shorter All I'm doing is push my tongue up for the high note shorter and let off a little quicker and going into that low note, yeah, yeah, make them shorter. Then if you combine the two together as a cow and a calf talking together, what we call communication talk. The next sound I'm going to do for you is what we really want to hear out of a cow, and this is called your estrus. Your estrus sounds can be done with a lot of emotions. You can start off just making kind of a little uh, sound, a vibration sound, in, from being high pitched into a nasal sound and draw it out a little longer. Make it as nasally as you can at the end, and this gives the cow, the bulls, the idea that the cow's in heat and she's in estrus, and that's her estrus sound. You can get a little more excited with it and get a little faster. You can learn to add your voice in there and get a little kind of a little growl at the same time you're doing that nasal sound, and that's what we call the estrus scream or the estrus buzz. And I just add my voice in there. Those are what we call the estrus scream or the estrus buzz. These sounds are real important to use. There's times when you want to use them with bugling. There's times when you don't want to use them with bugling. But these are the different sounds you can make with these calls. And just practice at them. And the more you practice, the better off you're going to be. The more realism you throw out there in the woods to these elk, you have a better chance of making them come to you.